questions and we got somebody to track the wallet addresses that were taking money out of QZ. It was five wallet addresses that were tracked and money is sitting in those wallet addresses. So on Saturday, we sent out a signal that everyone must uh, report those wallet addresses. And lucky enough for us, I think at this point, Binance was able to flagship those uh, wallet addresses and the money was hanged into those wallet addresses. It was like one account at $700 million, which is like 13 billion rands. 13 billion rents of our money sitting in that wallet and uh, there's other five four other accounts that were tracked with how much i think we've been sending that information in groups there's no need for us to keep on repeating one thing uh on sunday different people across the country started alarming the government saps law enforcement what is the way forward we started opening cases 32 cases were opened towards me as a leader. I was called in at the police station. So we started advising everybody, let's open cases towards QZ asset management. Now, one feedback that I have is that I personally try to go and open a case against QZ. I can't open a case against QZ. Other directors, other executives, we are not in a position to be able to open a case against QZ because if we open a case against QZ, that means we're opening a case against Lady B because Lady B is the director of QZ Asset Management South Africa. So if I go and open a case currently, it means I must open a case against Lady B. That's the report that I personally received from police station when I went to inquire what to do. Our team then put together a group of people to be able to know what to do. We have advocates that were part of our team. They joined QZ. We had a magistrate in our team. We have people that works in the Hawks. We have people that works in SAPS. We have doctors in our team. So we managed to come to put together a team of 10 people because we know nothing about law, some of us. We know nothing about law. We know nothing that what happens. We know nothing about blockchain. So the team that we created is a team of lawyers in our team. It's advocates. It's a one magistrate. It's uh, two doctors, I think. Uh, and we have one guy who specializes in the blockchain to try to assist us to track the money and what happened to people's money, the movement of money. So uh, then we, 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 we then signaled to Lady B on the group to say, we try to open a case so that these people can be tracked and people's money are retained. So we were told the crime scene in this thing was Deben because the office of QZ is in Deben. And the person that must open a case against QZ is Lady B as the director of the company. So on Monday, we communicated that. And then she said she will go and open a case then we were waiting for a case number. So on Monday, we were open uh, on Monday. That's when she said she'll go and open a case number. She's talking to her lawyers. We should give her some time to do the process. She'll get back to us on Tuesday about the case number. So uh, that was Monday. Then we did a Zoom meeting to inform the whole community that we are going to open a case. We've consulted the lawyers and they've given us a process. We also went to Interpol and Interpol is waiting for a case number. We have the Hawks involved and the Hawks are waiting for case numbers. But we're sitting with a situation that it's a, it's a particular person that must open uh, the case against QZ. So today, this morning, when we're still waiting for the case number, we receive a data. In the morning, we're still waiting for a case number. Now we receive a letter, the same letter that we circulated on all our groups. We receive a letter that says, yeah, we all read the letter, it's on the groups. The letter from lawyers, thank you, uh, Lady Peace lawyers. Then we received that lawyers a few hours ago. Now we are waiting for a case number but we receive a letter that clears leader thank you. So we're back to square one now. Uh, I'm actually on my way. I took this letter to find out now that this is the person that the SAPS said she must be the one that opens the case from Deben because in this particular case, Deben is the crime scene. In South Africa, every 
something happens according to where something happened. So somebody from Bloemfontein or somebody from Polokwane can open a case because the crime scene at SAPS, they ge geographically put the, the crime scene to Deben. All right. So after receiving that letter today, we're now making an alternative plan. So one guy on the team of investigators that are assisting us, the lawyers in our team, he said, we can go individually to now open cases against QZ asset management. So we requested in the leadership group today that can we have a few people opening a case against QZ in that way the hawks can be able to adapt the case and then they can link everything from there. Because what we need at this point, uh, what we need at this point is a case number that we can take to the hawks to adopt the case that we can take to interpol to to interfere in the issue then we can be able to go to the embassy the chinese embassy to get them involved because it's only interpol that can go to chinese embassy and force the chinese people government to actually work with the government of ours to be able to track these guys so as far as we have tried we, we were waiting for Lady B to give us a case number. So we are back to square one. And now we will have to go and individually open a case, combine all those cases, and the Hawks can be able to adopt the case. Without saying too many things and bluffing, uh, there's nothing that I'm looking for, except can the person who is behind the system open the system so that people can redeem their money now we're trying to come up with different solutions here and there's a whole lot of people that says i am the leader of my own team and i must pay people back their money i have no problem with being held accountable and being told by the law that i must pay people back but i get stuck at a point where i'm like okay we all know that we bought packages we bought shares. So when somebody comes with proof of payment and they want their money back, it's more than 5,000 people that are in my team. Where do I get the capacity to refund people more than 1 billion rents? Where am I going to get that money? I want to refund everybody. I want everyone to get the money back. Now assist me to understand how am I going to refund the money that went into QZ by that went into QZ wallet, QZ system? We bought packages and I only received 10% of the weekly, not even 10% of the team. So right now where we are is that we are at a point where we are all opening cases individually. We get the case numbers, we hand them over to the Hawks so that they can adopt the case. That's where we are right now because we waited for somebody for three days. We waited for somebody for three days to open a case on behalf of all QZ investors because she's the current director of QZ in South Africa and she hasn't done that. So we have to take it further. We now individually open opening cases that can correlate the information and we all are saying the same thing so that the Hawks can be able to adopt the information and take the case from there. The next thing particular team of lawyers that I'm talking about that are in our team, they were able to reach out to Richard, the guy who apparently brought this thing into South Africa, the guy who apparently recruited Lady B. We were able to attract this guy and he came forth to speak to this investigation team and they were able to persuade the guy to tell us what is going on. The guy finally agreed to speak to us and he did a Zoom yesterday. Now, when we were waiting for the guy to tell his side of the story, because as it is right now, it looks that's the guy behind the system or that's the guy who's been operating the system. Now, there are hackers who hacked that Zoom yesterday. There are people who interrupted the Zoom. The guy has disappeared since last night on the Zoom. We're still trying to track him again to come and tell the, the real story of what happened between this people and the Chinese. What really transpired for the two groups of people, the people who are behind the system and the Chinese to break this relationship or whatever. We don't know what happened right now. So this Richard guy is the biggest part of the puzzle. We need the guy to tell the story of what happened because he admitted that he's behind this system and like he admitted on Zoom yesterday but just before the guy could tell the truth the zoom was hacked so one thing that i'm also realizing is that this is not a one-man show 
there is a big group of people, a, a, a syndicate behind this that is happening. Secondly, when we go back to our uh, emails that prove that people bought packages, people invested, people bought shares. Now, those emails on other people's emails, the emails are, re are, are deleted. Other people's emails, the logo of QZ is removed. Other people, like there's a whole lot of things happening. So there's no way that a little person like me or you can sit in their back room and be able to pull out something like this. Absolutely no way. So one thing that we figured out is that this is a cartel or a syndicate, but there's too many things that we need to put together to find out how these people were able to pull something like this. Now, so that's how far it is in regards to our team and what responsibility we are taking to make sure that we track these people. If the owner of Tron, I still repeat, if the, Trona, the owner of Tron Grace was able to be found. The owner of one coin was able to be tracked. The owner of Omega Pro was able to be tracked. If we collaborate as members, victims of this thing, and they come together and they get Interpol and the Hawks to convene into this case, I believe these guys can be tracked. There are faces of these guys in videos, in Zooms, that when they came to attend the office launch in Deben, when we saw them in Bangkok at the dinner, there's too many movements that these guys were involved in. Clearly, FBI and Interpol can track them. They can track them. What needs to be identified is where they originate, the airline that they used to land into the country, the hotels where they slept. Now we're sitting in a situation where nobody wants to tell us this information. When did they land in the country? Which airline did they use? which hotel did they sleep at because with that type of information we can put together puzzles to try to find out the real identity of the guys so i believe with all this that each member has we can give these lawyers that are working on behind the scene enough information to be able to track the guys now it becomes very confusing when we have certain people amongst us who are not willing to give out information the same information that we need for people to get their money back so today we're working on opening those cases in our accords, combining the combining the cases and handing over the case to the Hawks. We've got a candidate already uh, from the Hawks who are who's guiding us on how to go forward. So that's what we're doing today. Hopefully tomorrow we will get feedback from the Hawks guy and we will probably convince this Richard to come and tell the truth because the Zoom just got messed up and he left. I don't know if he started panicking or what happened yesterday on that Zoom, but we're praying that he agrees to tell us what actually transpired because Richard is a bigger part of this puzzle. Lastly, lastly, me personally, now me, I fully take responsibility. I joined QZ, maybe had 1.2 million members, 1 million members that joined across Africa, Latin America, Philippines, India, Malaysia. We have members all over the world. I personally take liability of the people that I recruited, leading a team to do this business, knowing very well I did my own due diligence. I listened to the people that recruited me into the company. We re-went back and back and back into NASDAQ, and that was not a lie. The company is listed on NASDAQ, filed, filed. Now we told it's filed. We went into the Chinese government gazette. QZ is there in China. What we found out three days ago is that QZ is real. It's a real company. It's in China. The NASDAQ filing is a true story. It's not a fake. So what happened is that they cloned the information. So it's like when you can go somewhere to India and take the information of Capitec Bank and go to India and open a bank in India and run with Capitec information. When people go online and check everything true, everything tick the box, everything is true. Only to find out that the blade that we were given is not the blade that we ordered. PT, thousands of us have never met this guy. Thousands of guys of us have never sat in the table with this guy. Thousands of us have never had an interaction with this guy. So there's really only a certain match that we can do. So lastly, 
I take full responsibility of what happened from me going down. And I sat in the group and I'm still saying on the Zoom, if the court says, Chabe, you are liable for people's losses, so be it. Because I didn't know this is a scam. I've been in network marketing for 10 years. I've been in network marketing for 10 years. And this is the first time I faced a situation like this. I don't even know how to approach it. I have to ask, how do we do this? How do we do this? How do we open a case? Because this is my first digital project going out like this. So if the court, SAPS, right now, too many people reported me, I don't blame anyone because you look up to me as a leader. So my accounts are frozen. Too many people reported me. There are about 32 cases, people that went to SAPS showed that they paid into my account january february even people from january they reported me it's okay i'm saying i did choose that and i thought it's a real opportunity i won't run away i will be here till the end of the time what matters to me is for the real owner of 2Z to be found and for this person to take responsibility and for people to get their money back it's not nice for me to receive photos, calls of people that are in hospital, my my executives, my senior president, junior presidents, people are threatening them, people are going to their houses. We recruited people thinking that we found an opportunity. It was great regret today to stand up here and say it was all a cover up. Somebody took to that asset management that exists in China, they cloned the information, they cloned the CEO, and they gave us a Maraba start QZ. So when you go online and you check on Nasdaq, QZ is there. When you go on the Chinese government gazette and check, QZ is there. But we were given a Maraba start QZ, and we can't sit here and not me, hey, it's this one, hey, it's not me, I didn't know. All of that doesn't help us to get closer to the truth. So all I'm saying is that, Please, kindly go easy on the people that recruited all of you guys. They didn't know. I believe just like the information passed right on top of my head. I believe those people also, the information. I mean, we had signed magistrates. We had signed lawyers. We had signed doctors. You know, we, we signed politicians. We signed, hey, in Nigeria, we were signing sons of presidents. So as much as all these people that are very qualified with so much information in the banking center, we have accountants, CAs in our team, and the information passed them right like this. So I humbly request you, do not go to somebody who recruited you and treat them like this was the company. You know very well that the money that you paid, it went into Binance, it bought dollars, and people bought packages. So now you know that somebody was benefiting 10%. You give somebody 2,000 rand, they only got 100 rand or 200. So when you say that person must pay you back, can you explain to me how this will be done so that we can do it? We want solutions. We want people to get their money back. But when you go to your senior vice president or a junior and say, pay back my money, how do you expect them to do that? The reason why the owner of Omega Pro was tracked down is because all members became one and they started going after the real person, which is the person who's today sitting with $700 million. $700 million is... 13 billion rent. That's where we should be facing because it's true that, that people can get their refunds. Take my accounts, sell my car, repay the 10 people that you can repay. Did we solve the issue? Or are we still sitting with 1 million investors that want their money back? Can take back my car. Can take back my car, even the one that I bought when I was still working in the mine in 2015. Take it, sell it. The question still remains, can I pay the 1 million people that joined QZ back? I can. Even if you sell me in an auction, I still can't pay people back. So can we all just collaborate? When you are called, you guys are going to receive calls. You are going to receive to bring proof. Some of you will be called as random, uh, as random people to come do statements. Collaborate collaborate with the law officials. If you are able to go open a case and tell your story about QZ, do that. Then come to us and give us that uh, case number. The more of us we build a solid case, the more the Hawks can help us. As a closing remark, 
there is a lot of groups that are now uh, there is a lot of groups that are now created hey we are going to help you find your money back hey wara 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 i've went through all of that information that is circulating and i found out that there are now people that made it their sole responsibility to scam people because they are vulnerable there is one group where they ask people to pay two there's another group where people are told to pay 1000 they found a lawyer where, where for them to help them get their money back people are paying 1000 there is another group where people are asked their email addresses their usernames all that information that you're giving away if it happens that the system come back you will never be able to get your money be very careful the people that are busy opening up these groups they have ulterior motives. They're going to take people's money. Imagine if one group is full and this guy is saying, pay 1,000 rand per member, we will represent you. 1,000 people in a group paying 1,000. That's 1 million rand. So now they are tenses and exploiting our people because right now people are vulnerable. People are ahead. Please stop exploiting people that are hating, people that are on the verge of losing their lives because of this thing. Now we hand them over to extra scammers to take the 1,000 rent in the name of we will represent you. We will represent you where? Because anybody who wants to represent you that members right now must do a public statement, must give us a case number, and they must tell us how are they representing people. I'm here, I'm telling you today, the initiative that we took at Success Academy, all the lawyers that are in our team they came together the advocates and one uh magistrate uh, and one guy who is in blockchain understand how the money moves in the blockchain thing it's my first time doing this thing so i really don't know how crypto works but those people came together and they were waiting for a case number from lady b towards qz it never came so today they told us 10 or 15 people must go open cases against qz we take the case numbers send all the information about your case, what you reported, the statement you made against QZ. They'll combine all of that and create a, a case that will be submitted as the Hox or Interpol. So that's what we're busy with today as a team. Lastly, I humbly apologize because I understand as a leader, I have a responsibility to not do things like this. I joined a company and as a result of me joining, there is a whole lot of people that came after me and joined this thing because they saw me doing it. They saw me believing in something. There are people who said, because Chad is there, I will be there. They relied on me to know whether this is the right opportunity or not. So for that, I also say I completely take responsibility. And I still repeat, if South African police service or the Hawks or the government see it fit, to sell me, sell this car that I drive, that I bought when I was still in Londres. If they want to liquidate my account to pay back people, so be it. One thing I'm not going to do is run away from my life. I grew up right here in South Africa. You guys have seen me join network marketing. You've seen me grow in this industry. Why would I run away today? So I will be here till the end of time. If it means to go behind the, the cell and pay time for misjudging an opportunity that end up putting so many lives in danger, so be it. I will go to jail. I apologize that my decision of joining this thing resulted in so many people following and joining. It's a responsibility that I'm willing to die for. As a leader who stood up in front of someone and recruit now, to them is there. You go to Chinese government gazette, QZ is there. What happened is that we bought a QZ from Marabastad, a copy of the real thing. That's where I end. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the Zoom. Thank you so much for joining the Zoom. When we call you or when we post on the group asking you to do a specific activity, kindly assist us and do it. If we send a link from the IRS and say, submit this and fill up this, kindly do it. If we say, let's all send an email and do this, can we please all do it?
because it's all these little things that we're doing that will make a full case to support us to be able to fight the people behind QZ. Now, lady, thank you so much. Can you kindly take over? We can take a few questions. If people have questions, we can interact with you guys, those that want to talk. I'm done. If there are questions, I'm willing to answer them. If there's any leader who's willing to say something, you're welcome to say something. But all I'm saying is that me fighting executives, me fighting whoever, it's not going to help us to be able to go after the people that are sitting with 13 billion rand of South Africans hard earned money. Naledi? All right, all right, thank you very much, um, Leader Chavi, for the information that you've given. So we are going to take a few questions. Um, I see leaders have started raising their hands. So just raise your hands once and then we will unmute because I'm unable to unmute everyone all at the same time. So we'll take the hands that are up. Um, I'm going to unmute you now to speak. And then once you've asked your question, please just mute again. Uh, thank you, lady. Yes, thank you, lady. Uh, Chavi, just one question to you or just anyone in the team. If the company, in this case, is Lady B, it's obvious that she will not be comfortable to open a case against herself. So why can't, like you mentioned, that let's all open cases. And I also believe that if people are going to open cases against each other, so in your capacity as a director, don't you think it's also ideal to open cases against the very same company, which is now Lady B in this case? Or are you guys, you know, not feeling comfortable to do that, given that, you know, they have, you guys have had some relationships before and you don't want to tarnish that? Thank you. Can you just speak, um, just show, show me again so that I can unmute you. I don't know which one you are. Look at this one. Okay, uh, Martin, I don't think this is a straightforward thing. I also believe that, let's, let's, take, let's say for instance, I'm a director in the company and I know very well that I'm not part of management. At no point I had a say in how things are done at QZ. I never had a conversation with Blake Young, but I'm a director, you know. And my question now is, what if Lady B is innocent? What if Lady B is a director just like me? And maybe because I'm not the first, it's not the first time I work with Chinese people. I worked with Chinese for five years in Long Ridge. So what happens? This issue of she's the, she's the one who, who registered the company, right? So that's the only threat we, we're hanging on. Do we now say Lady B is the one who scammed us or she's behind QZ simply because she registered it here and she says it was for the purpose of opening the office, right? So now, with the little experience that I have for, for working with Chinese, I remember in 2016, when we wanted to open a market in Tanzania, we will get, we got my team leader there to open a Lone Ridge Tanzania, open an account so people can deposit so that we can be able to have a depot or an office. So me personally, I wouldn't want to say it's Chabe, it's Maditi, it's who, who, who. That's why I'm saying we then went back to, we then went back to the, the team, the investigating team, which is lawyers that is assisting us. And they said individual people, even if it's 15, even if it's 20. So I don't want people in this team to do that. I will select leaders in the leadership team, like people who are seniors, executives, who will go and create those cases where we open a case against QZ. Because what if, what 
if let's just put it if because the law still says you're not guilty until you're proven guilty what if it's just a case where she's a director like me and she really doesn't know it might happen she knows it also might happen she doesn't know so let's just follow the route that the lawyers are saying we must follow because then also if we cross border the law our case will also be thrown out any evidence that you get in a law it must be evidence that you got legitimately if the evidence is not legitimate then also they're going to throw out the case in court. So we need to be very careful on how we threat. We don't accuse people of things that we can't prove. We don't do all those things because once something was not uh, achieved in the rightful or the lawful manner, it will be thrown out in the court of law. All right. All right. I think we will move on to Tamsang Jerry. I'm going to unmute you now. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Naledi, and good uh, evening to everybody. Um, my, uh, on my side, I would like to encourage, like everybody, you know, um, there I, there will be information uh, that thing that like, pay attention to the information that you receive, because uh, there are fake information that is being circulating around the group. I think as success academy, we need to follow what our leaders are telling us to do because this is a very, very big thing and then it's very, very complicated, you understand? So we need to pay attention to what the leaders are telling us. And uh, like what Chabi has said, sometimes to accuse someone without proper information, it can put you in trouble, you understand? So. This is a very sensitive thing, you know. Um, obvious, we have at this present moment, uh, we need to listen to the expert, and then they will give us they will give us the, the roadmap on how are they going to tackle this thing. So, accusing people, sending things on social media might put you in trouble. You understand? So, we just need to follow what our leaders are telling us to do. We need to be patient, like what Tabe said. Uh, Chabe said, guys, um, we didn't know. Obviously, if we knew, you understand, I recruited people myself. And I didn't know, you know, uh, because, you, you know, it, it's something that, guys, this is a well-executed thing that it, it, it dribbles everybody, you understand? So on my side, I'll say as leaders of Sussex Academy, we'll do whatever it takes to try and update you guys on a daily basis. This is a very tricky thing. It's not easy. It's not just easy to go and get the, even if we suspect a particular person, but you need to have a valid information against that person because a law can be against you. Even if you say, oh, Tammy did this part, they will say, where is the fact? Where is the proof that Tammy did? So we need to be very careful. So there will be information. There are people who are even not chosen as a management who have got a, a personal agenda who will feed you guys wrong information. And then you can, uh, can have being in the wrong side, just like someone who went, uh, I think in, uh, in Zimbabwe, she went and arrested someone, and then they went to the uh, to the police station. And then when it, when they got to the police station, they were both charged. You see, it's that thing of taking opinion from other people who are not even uh, uh, chosen asset management, you understand? So we need to be careful. Let's pay attention to what the, uh, said the leaders of Success Academy. Like what Chavez said, we were waiting for a feedback from uh, 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 now we we go back to square one but thank god we've got people who are expecting law who are going to advise us and tell us what needs to be done so we need to be patient and let's support our leaders thank you so much all right thank you leadership um Bobo, let's keep it let's try and keep it to 30 seconds Bobo. Thank you so much and good evening to everyone. Mine is just to get clarity. Um, my understanding was that SAPS said a case can only be opened by Lady B against the company QZ. But later on, um, we are advised to open cases or we are even told that there are individuals who opened cases. So how could those people open cases against QZ 
when somebody else was told, no, no, Lady B is the only one who can open a case against QZ. I, I'm a bit lost there. And I also want to know how we will know that the, the, the information we receive in groups is from Success Academy. How, how can we say this information is legit? Thank you. Thank you. All right, so when it comes to, so we were advised that the crime scene in this case, it's like when you are hacked, the way they explain the cyber crime, when you are hacked on Facebook or your Instagram is hacked or your account is hacked, when you try to go and open a case, they're going to tell you to go open a case where you saw that you are hacked. That's regarded as a crime scene. SAPS works geographically. That's why in the long run, it won't be SAPS that takes this case because they're not capacitated to deal with cases like this. So what we need is a reference point of where this thing uh, started. So now we we were told the case has to be opened by Lady B. So we waited for her Monday and Tuesday. This morning when she was supposed to come back to us with the case number, she comes back to us with a letter from her own lawyers. So we went back to this uh, advice and investigation team. We gave them this letter. So the next step is for the few of us to open the case against QZ. They didn't say we must go open cases against Tengiwe. That's not what the lawyers are saying. Because that letter from Tengiwe's letters, she's associ associating herself from being asked questions as she says she's not QZ. QZ belongs to Blake Young. So now the lawyers said, okay, let's randomly open cases, even if it's 10 or 15, just so the Hawks can adopt this case. So that's the process that uh, this is the feedback we got today around two. So that's the process that now we're trying to do. So remember also, what we're trying to do doesn't, it's not a decision that was made by 1.2 million investors in QZ. It's what our little team is trying to do. We can't just sit. The answer is we can't just sit. There's too many people coming here, they're telling us we're lying, they're telling us blah, blah, blah. But it's funny enough, they're sitting in their houses. They haven't done anything. All they do is type. That's all they do. 99% of people, all they do is type. They've done nothing. So today around two, we got this call from the lawyers to say, we cannot open a case against somebody who's declaring that they not choose it. They were told to register so that we can open an office. So we have to open a case against choose it. And who are the founders of QZ? Who's the owner? We all have those documents in our phones. We have all we all have those recordings in our phones. We all know who was shown to us as the QZ owner, QZ MD, whatever, whatever. We all have that information. It's public. So the case has to be opened against those guys. And that at each stage of the law, certain people will be taken into responsibility to explain their role in this whole day. Somebody who registered will be called to explain why were you the one who registered? Why were you the one? The next one will be called to explain why did you open this office in Johannesburg? How can you take an office in your name? The next one will be asked, why were you the one who booked flights for people to go to Bangkok? Why? Until the law finds the truth. So you come back, you make efforts, you look for this, you do this. When you come back and give people feedback, they tell you you are lying. <clears throat> all right, thank you, thank you, Leah. Um, all right, I see the questions are increasing, leaders. We are going to only take questions uh, until um, hour. We had an hour. There's a leadership meeting at uh, at seven. We need to prepare. We said we're only going to take uh, five questions. Okay. So let's go and attend to the things that matters wrap up the meeting all right all right thank you very much leaders um all the leaders that are on the call um let me just see the questions on the zoom that happens to majority people okay so we have all heard 
the update of what has been happening throughout the week. Once again, um, apologies to those, all the parties that are currently involved. Um, apologies for sharing an opportunity that looked like it was going to change life, right? That had already changed life within our organization. Um, so, right, till we meet again with the next update, um, all updates will be posted in the road to, I mean, in the Success Academy groups. So be on the lookout for, for those new messages. All right, leaders, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to wrap up the meeting.